This is Akashwani Bengaluru. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Yuvavani. I am Jyoti Das. With me in studio today are a bunch of young design graduates, Anugya, Matangi, and Tejas from the Center for Product Design and Manufacturing, CPDM at IISC Bangalore. They have completed their masters in product design and engineering. They promise an engaging conversation on the theme of design in India. We'll discuss the current state and exciting possibilities in the future that the field of design holds. Without any more ado, let's meet our guests. Thanks Jyoti, I'm Anugya. Now to simply put, I would like to explain that design is a field that encompasses a wide range of disciplines that involve creating, shaping, optimizing various aspects of product spaces, interfaces and experiences. Any object that you use in your everyday life, take a pen or the studio mic is an example that couldn't have been made possible without designing. Design combines artistic creativity with practical problem solving skills to find solutions to everyday problems. We are engaged in various fields of graphic design, industrial design, engineering design, fashion design, web design, and a lot more. Tejas, what are your views about the current design landscape in India? I think that the design landscape in India has transformed significantly over the past few years. We are witnessing a fusion of uh, traditional aesthetics and modern sensibilities in the Indian design space. Indian designers are trying to incorporate indigenous crafts and techniques into contemporary design styles that already exist. This can especially be seen in the cane furniture business that is very indigenous to northeastern India. We now see these as staples in bohemian interiors. In fact, the bohemian aesthetic itself has come to become a unique blend between India and the West. Take the Indian sari for example. It has made its spot on the global fashion diaspora with many designers even trying to blend it with western wear and some trying to bring it back in its true essence of classy office wear. That's absolutely right, Tejas. I am Matangi. And since we brought up this topic of what characterizes Indian design, I would also like to give a positive spin to the term Jogad, something that's so indigenous to our country. As Govinda's song goes, it happens only in India, right? So Jogad has always been given a negative connotation. But I feel it resides at the heart of the Indian innovative mindset and it should in fact be appreciated. While it's true that a Jogad product cannot necessarily be an industrially ready product, it can always be a great starting point. These products are examples that show that good designs don't always look good, but they work just fine. A product that is apt and optimized for the use case. In fact, what saved the Apollo 13 mission astronauts from suffocating on their own exhaled carbon dioxide was nothing but jugad or frugal innovation. They used nothing but a pair of socks, duct tape, plastic covers and some other seemingly random items to make use of square-shaped CO2 scrubbers that were to be inserted into sockets designed for circular CO2 scrubbers. The device they ended up was infamously called the mailbox rig as many would have heard. So Jugard takes a functionality first approach where a particular functional elegance is achieved as an aesthetic attribute of the product. What we see in Jugard is creativity entering unexplored horizons because resources are minimized and personally I feel that working on so-called Jugard design would actually be an extremely helpful learning assignment for students at design schools since they too are in a resource limited environment both skill wise that is intellectual resource and manufacturing setup alike. And while we are talking about innovating through ideas, I would also like to mention that other industries are also flourishing in the field of design, be it fashion, architecture and product design. And another change that we are seeing in the country is the shift towards sustainable design, which is reflecting India's commitment to environmental consciousness. For example, one of the startup is called Malai, in which they make sustainable vegan leather out of coconut meat. And then there were PPE robes in COVID were also born out of such startups. India is working towards innovation and startups and encouraging such ideas so we can work a lot more towards them, inculcating design thinking. Our country being so vast and varied, I'm sure the designers here meet with absolutely unique opportunities as well as unforeseen challenges. Could you tell us about them? 
One major challenge is the balance between tradition and innovation. As we embrace modernity, preserving cultural authenticity becomes crucial and difficult at the same time. One should design to encourage traditional handicraft and culture rather than run over them. Take Lijjat Papad for example. Each Lijjat Papad that you eat today could have been made by a different Indian woman working for Lijjat Papad from her own home. Instead of mechanizing the whole papad making process, the organization has smartly managed to maintain the quality, the taste, the thickness and size of all these papads by centralizing the dough making and giving simple standardized tools like a belan and chakla marked with circles for size. One can imagine the amount of brainstorming and design techniques used to come up with such a remarkable idea. It not just saves cost to the company but it also provides employment for so many women and all the papads are standardized. This is a system design and organizational design at its best. India being a developing country in a way is a boon to designers. We are lucky to find a lot of real world problems in not just food and rural sector but even other sectors like defense etc which can be used to solve creative design thinking. In fact some of the best defense innovations have come from India. One challenge for designing for defense in India is the variance in the Indian geography and climatic conditions. Soldiers in Siachen have to face almost negative 50 degrees where the pre-cooked food MREs as they are called they receive it as frozen and they need to put the food in boiling water to heat it but lighting a fire may expose their location to the enemy troops. Having this in mind DRDO developed a self-heating food packet that uses exothermic reaction chemical reactions that produce heat. All the soldiers need to do is add water to the packet. Absolutely and uh, in fact same technology was tweaked slightly to make foot heating packets for the same soldiers who in fact have to walk for 4 to 5 hours in the cold terrain in Siachen and that slight tweaking of technology in fact maintained their feet at about 36 degrees which is almost body temperature for these 4 to 5 hours well while there are so many challenges but these challenges also present opportunities With the right policies and investments, India can foster a robust design ecosystem. Collaboration between designers, artisans, and technology experts can yield groundbreaking outcomes. For example, design schools can adopt the method to collaborate with industry while assigning course projects to the students. Like when we were in our second semester at CPDM ISC, we were given a design challenge to address hand hygiene issue in India. Indian Sanitation Coalition and UNICEF organized this challenge and of course a lot of brilliant ideas were submitted from across the country drawing from this i feel designing for the masses at low cost and high durability is another design challenge in india tata swatch is a great example they designed a no electricity water filter with top notch aesthetics that costed under only 1000 rupees the highlight is that this filter proved its worth when it was used to serve the millions of visitors in occasions like kumbh mela well seems like a great time to be a designer in india how do you envision the future of design in our country so i see a convergence of advanced technologies like ai 3d printing and mixed reality that could mix up with our rich artistic heritage 3d printing has vastly reduced the prototyping time and cost for innovation labs I personally used 3D print extensively to test out small functional components in my designs. It has evolved over the years and increased the scale at which designs can be printed. The recently unveiled fully 3D printed post office in Bangalore gives a glimpse of how 3D printing is changing the way we build our living spaces. In the digital space however, immersive media has made tremendous leaps. Mixed reality seems to be changing the way we interact with our surroundings. In fact uh, there are now ai tools that can convert your product design sketches probably recognize what they might look like in real life and in create an automatic render for you so those are really great tools because they not just convert your sketches but they also give you an idea about what that product will look like there are also some tools that might think for you what i mean is let's say you are going ahead in your sketching process while you're ideating the ai tools give prompts or suggestions as to how you can go ahead how other designers are thinking in this domain so that actually adds more ingredients in the recipe of your thought 
we are also now seeing more and more engineers and people from other professions enter the design field soon a design degree i feel might become something like a management degree a skill that can be applied in multiple fields design should move up the value chain in this way and take a more abstract more pluralistic view where design is considered to be a way of thinking to solve problems in any field when people from different backgrounds become designers we can see the design skill being combined with technical know-how leading to tangible fruition of imagined designs so this is exactly where we should be heading but all this progress can be empowered only through quality education what are your thoughts on the role that design institutes have to play in shaping students for the possible dynamic future design education in india it needs to be holistic it should foster both creativity as well as critical thinking exposure to various disciplines and hands on experience will equip students to tackle complex problems creatively that's so very correct even internships and industry partnerships are vital students should work on real world projects applying their skills in practical settings moreover integrating cultural studies will help them appreciate the significance of design in the indian context well there are various exams like uc seed nid yet which can get you into design schools like cpdm at iisc bangalore idc at iit bombay or design departments in other iits nids in ups it's in fact interesting that uh, the latest education policy has introduced design education for schools also i'm very excited to see what the results of this are many young people today still don't know that a field of education called design exists and introducing design in schools is a great move to sensitize students on the value of design thinking design thinking should be inculcated as a way of life rather than as a core subject so that one can always jump to his or her creative side to find solutions when in difficult situations in the end let's hear about cpdm at iisc how is it making a difference CPDM IISC has been at the forefront of nurturing design innovation. They offer interdisciplinary programs that equip students with a deep understanding of design principles and engineering expertise. Graduates are well prepared to tackle real world challenges by combining their creative skills with technological know-how. So at CPDM we are encouraged to not limit our design practice to planning and innovation but actually going ahead and executing the innovation. to bring forth a product this approach has consistently led to a number of patents from cpdm students every year and in fact we have also been bagging many design awards like the james dyson and the red dot design award absolutely cpdm fosters a culture of research driven design they encourage students to explore innovative solutions to complex problems through collaboration with industries and academia this approach ensures that the designs are not just aesthetic but also functional and impactful I would also like to mention an example from CPDM which is Life Box. It is a product designed by one of our former MD student and it helps to transfer organs by drones and it is a very innovative technology which has been helping and can bring about a very positive change in the society. CPDM is also playing pivotal role in producing the next generation of design entrepreneurs. Our alums have started up various companies. For example, Anna, that was acquired by Ultra Human, made India's first smart ring. Mimic is a startup incubated at IIC that makes surgical simulators that can help medical students learn surgery better. The journey of design in India sure seems to be not only promising but also transformative. With that, we conclude tonight's session. You were listening to Yuva Vani. I'm Jyoti Das. and with me were anugya matangi and tejas from the center for product design and manufacturing iisc bangalore this program was brought to you by akashwani bengaluru